What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona. And today we're visiting the History Museum of Barcelona, right here in the Plaza del Rey. The History Museum of Barcelona, or MUVA as it's referred to here, is actually a larger network of spaces throughout Barcelona that allow you to uncover the city's history. The headquarters are here in the Square of the King, right in the middle of the Gothic Quarter. Whenever anyone asks me about some of the must-see museums, the MUVA is always at the top of my list. But it's not just what you see on the inside. The building alone helps tell the history of the neighborhood. The building itself is one of my favorite in the Gothic Quarter and in Barcelona as a whole. What you see behind me is a 15th century house that was not here in the 15th century. It was actually moved into the Gothic Quarter in that attempt to build more of a Gothic presence around the neighborhood. This house was actually on the other side of the Via Laietana. When that Via Laietana, the big street that cuts through the old part of the city, was built, some houses were going to be affected. And so they took a register. Basically, A, B, C, D, or E were what the houses or the buildings were labeled. D, E buildings weren't going to be that important and were pretty much destroyed. B, C buildings were something that maybe parts of them could be reused again. And A level buildings, like the one you see right behind me, were actually taken apart stone by stone and stored away. This house was in a warehouse throughout the 1930s and put back and assembled together in 1943, creating the History Museum of Barcelona. Now the crazy part is, when they wanted to put the house in this plaza, they started to excavate and they found that the Roman city was still below street level. That's when it turned into the History Museum. And so what you do is you enter in the house right behind me, go down 2,000 years into the past. You walk around under everything that we're standing on right now, under the Barcelona today, and then you come out through the Royal Palace. The exit is on the opposite side of the plaza. It's an incredible building and a museum that you need to visit when you're here in the city. The museum basically takes up the entire Plaza del Rey. You're gonna visit the plaza on any trip to the city, so you might as well take advantage and see what's inside. Along with the house in the Royal Palace, you'll also visit the chapel dedicated to St. Agatha, built atop the Roman wall, and walk the very steps they say where Columbus was received by Isabel and Ferdinand on his return trip. Admission is only 7 euros and the museum is incredibly easy to get to. While the Jaume I metro stop on the yellow line leaves you right outside the front door, it's also an easy walk right in the city center. Under the Romans, Barcelona was originally called Colonia Julia Augusta Faventia Paterna Barquino. And while the museum will show you all sorts of artifacts that are left from that time, the real treasure is what lies below. So let's take a trip into the past. Hidden below the surface, there is so much to explore of the Roman and Visigothic Barcelonas. Former streets lead you through the city to see what's left of the houses, city walls, and public buildings. Walls that shielded the city from attacks and were later reconstructed with whatever material was available hold old stones and plaques propping up the remains today. If you pay attention, you'll see them lining the walls above ground as well. The best part is you're walking through basically the old streets and the houses and they'll tell you where you are compared to the streets above today. So it's really cool to just check out everything that you would have never known was even under here. And it's so much bigger than you think. I'm impressed every single time I come in here because it's not just the Roman ruins, but it also gets into the Visigothic periods and even up to the Middle Ages. We're basically under the cathedral right now and you can see the remains left over from the Romanesque cathedral that was here even before. This is an amazing space known as the Salon de Tine. This is where all the counts and the kings later would come and have their courts. It's one of the best examples of Catalan Gothic architecture we have in the city. Just check out those arches. After your walk through the remains of the early Barcelona, you get to see what makes up the royal palace. The Salon de Tinel offers different types of exhibits throughout the year, so you want to make sure to check to see what's available while you're here. 
After that, you'll see the 14th century royal chapel dedicated to St. Agatha. What always impresses me is that it was built right on top of that Roman wall. Remember that while you're on the inside. I hope you guys enjoyed the visit of the History Museum of Barcelona. As you can see, it has all sorts of things to check out. And again, things that you probably wouldn't think were just under the ground here. It makes you really think, what else could be under Barcelona? Are there other things to explore, to excavate, to find out? This is one of the museums that I always recommend when you're in the city, not just to find out about Barcelona, but to actually see that history and that past. Give that video a like, and remember to subscribe to find out other things you should do while you're here in Barcelona.